Hi, everybody. Um, I don't even know what today is. I don't even care what today is. I know it's Monday, and we're off and running. I just, I'm feeling kind of uh, lazy today. Took the boys out for a walk, and uh, they both pooped and peed and m met some people on the walk and entertained them. Then we got home, and they ate, and... Uh, I'm getting ready now for a, a Zoom interview with a couple of people from Canada. Um, and um, But I it was fun yesterday revisiting Billy Thorpe. I really enjoyed that. I loved working with Billy. And uh, he was really one of the most amazing artists I ever had the pleasure to work with in this business. I really enjoyed touring with him, recording with him, and, and hanging with him. Uh, so I was like looking at other things, and I'd never known anybody that experienced this before, but actually this episode of This Is Your Life was Billy Thorpe. It's down in Australia, and I watched it last night, and it's really, really touching, and it was really fun to watch, and I thought just rather than doing another song today, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to show you this, This Is Your Life. This is from... Um, I believe that, that, that this is 1996. Uh, I saw it posted as, as 97, um, but it's obvious this is when they, they did it. But Billy passed away in 2007. Um, but, uh, you know, just seeing it really brought back so many uh, memories of, uh, of the time we spent together. And it was interesting seeing this because he had buzz cut his, his hair and uh, when we worked together, he had this huge blonde mane. I mean, he was, you know, it was an amazing head of hair. So I just went, wow, <laughs> it's like a trip. Um, and it was really great on, on this one to see, uh, see Lynn, his wife, uh, to see his older daughter, Rusty, on here. I had The last time I had seen Rusty, she was a, 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 ba a little baby and a little kid. And... Uh, all of us and see her as a young woman on here with her sister also. Uh, it, it was a really uh, moving thing last night for me. So I just I just wanted to go down this road again. Um, I'm, it looks like the uh, um, auction for the Dingwall base was completed. And I, I believe that they got $10,500 for it, which all of that is going to go to the Elephant Sanctuary. So that's fantastic. I'm anxious to find out who got it and personalize the base to them and send a picture and some stuff because uh, I just think it's really, really cool. Um, let's see, anything else today? I had a few things to do. I got some stuff to throw in the mail, book and some t-shirts and things. I'll run and do that when we're all finished up after my uh, interview is over. But for right now, I thought, let's just go ahead and watch this this is your life, Billy Thorpe. Uh, I'm just going to sit back and dig this again because it really, for me, it's pretty emotional watching this guy's life and, and the people that contributed to this. Uh, it's, it's pretty great. So here we go. Hi, and welcome to This Is Your Life. Well, we're here at Sydney's King's Cross Railway Station, where once upon a time above us was Australia's most legendary music venue. But if peak hour was pretty noisy here, in those days, it had nothing on that venue called Surf City, where it was much louder. It was where some of Australia's greatest pop singers were launched. And tonight's guest of honour was one of them. He went from teen idol on to become our best known rock and roller. In fact, his music inspired a following he still has today, 30 years later. Now, he's also turned author and is about to launch his first book. And that's where we're going to surprise him, right in the middle of his book launch. So, let's go. Because what I did was, um, I'm a frustrated poet too, and seeing as I'm an author now, I'm able to do the whole damn lot. It's very nice to... Uh, that's another nice thing, is being able to say, uh, oh, shit. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. I was just with this guy in LA. You, you, I was, there's no way to 
I'm on my way out of this event. There's no way you can buy it. Oh, and I know you're not a left fussed about it. I'm not. You have actually said to Lynn, uh, please don't let them ever do that. To I swear. Uh, oh, God. And we're going to do the show now. Right now? Well, we'll give you a couple of things to say goodbye to your guests here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I didn't have a couple of drinks then, mate. <laughs> William Richard Thorpe. You're born on March 29th, 1946 in Manchester, England, <laughs> the only child of Bill and Mabel Thorpe. Your father is a bulldozer driver who plays the accordion and the piano. Your mother is a showgirl who hangs up her dancing shoes to raise you. She becomes your fiercest supporter and she joins us now. Mrs. Thorpe, what sort of a son was he Bill? He was very good. She's 89. Dad, Dad and I was proud of him as a boy. And he's, and he's always been a good son, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's been a lovely son. Why don't you take a seat over there yeah, next to Billy? Thanks, Mrs. Thorpe. You were eight in 1955 when you and your parents joined the ranks of the 10 pound palms and migrate to Australia. Your first taste of this strange country is in the Salvation Army Hostel in Melbourne. Now that same year your parents present you with a guitar and something magical happens when you pick it up and play it for the first time. From then on you rarely put it down. The family then moves to Brisbane and your father opens a general store. Now a local talent scout spots you strumming your guitar behind the shop counter. She offers you a two-week gig at the Railway Hotel in Woolungumba. Is that right? Woolungabba. Woolungabba, when you're just 10 years old. That's right. Billy, your career now starts to take off. At the ripe old age of 11, you become a regular on local television programs like Teen Beat. You earn your stripes in stage shows, clubs, even vaudeville. At 16, you make your first national television appearance on the afternoon teen show, Saturday Date. Oh, you mean the Pimple Show. It's the host of Saturday Date and the man who gave you your first big break, Jimmy Hannon. Oh! <laughs> Look at this face. Look at this face. Now, what's this about the Pimple Show? Well, the, the rival show was Bandstand, right? So it was, yeah. They had a, a sponsor called Clearasil, and everybody's clean cut, you know, Brian, Henderson, everything like that. But on, on Saturday night, they were down to earth. It was a great uh, atmosphere, and they were a bit, a bit on the grunge side with a little bit of okay. acne, you know. Not that you had acne. Oh, I did. I had no, 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 no. He was always a very smooth performer, he this guy. He gave me my first shot here. He yeah. did. And yeah. what was his act like? Oh, well, we were duet. Right. I was a duet and a yeah. duet when I first came. In the James in. Boys. Yeah, yeah that's right. James yeah. Boys. And uh, he got top money. Five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to pay a big talent. He is a big talent. He's a big star. And he's oh, still is. Congratulations, you. Billy. Thank Enjoy you. the night. Thanks, Thank Jimmy. You Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're marvellous, Mabel. It's Billy, when you so are performing, cute. school certainly takes a back seat. Your headmaster despairs of you. He even predicts you'll end up in Brisbane's Boggo Road Jail if you don't change your tune. <laughs> now, was that, a, was that prediction justified? Well, uh, I, I, if I hadn't gotten to music, probably that's where I was headed. Yeah, considering the people I hung out with at, at a young age. Did yeah. a few of them end up there? Yeah, many of them. <laughs> okay, well, don't go away because, because coming up, Billy Thorpe is crowned King of Pop. But first, let's hear from a few of your mates, starting with Olivia Newton-John and her sister, Rona. Oh. G'day, mate. Hi, Billy. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. We know you must be cringing, and we promise we won't embarrass you with any of those terrible stories. I didn't promise. <laughs> I read your book last night. What a hot book. It's going to be a smash. It's fantastic. It we're, really is. We're very proud of you, and I think you're a wonderful singer and a great guy, and have a good show, and don't cringe too much. See ya. Hi, Billy. Sorry I can't be with you tonight. We'll always have those bandstand days memories to share, won't we? 
you are very respected because you're a great Australian performer and I hope you're having a wonderful night. Bobby, Merritt here. Uh, just thought I'd run this by you. 1963, you were part of a duo. You became a solo act halfway through the song when your friend fell off the stage. Uh, look, mate, I'm really proud of you. I'm pleased for you. Have a great night. And nobody deserves it more than you. Welcome back to the Billy Thorpe story. It's 1963 and the world is on the verge of a musical revolution. And you are hell-bent on being a big part of it. At 17, you head for Sydney, the capital of pop music. You hit King's Cross and immediately fall in love with not one, but two women, Pepper and Natalie, and set up house with both of them. True? <laughs> My mother doesn't know anything about this, by the way. Because <laughs> she hasn't read the book yet. I was, was going to break this to her gently, but yes, it's true. True? Yeah. yeah. Jeez, to be a rock star, Billy. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, right in the heart of King's Cross is Surf City. It's the mecca for thousands of hormone-charged teenagers. They come to listen to surf music and to do a dance called the stomp. There it is. It's also where bands get a shot at the big time. At 17, you're asked to sing here with a group called the Aztecs, and together you develop your own version of the stomp. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Billy, you haven't seen uh, some of these guys for 30 years, but here they are now. The original Aztecs, Vince Maloney, Tony Barber, Cole Pagan and Bluey Watson. It's so cool. So listen guys, will you show us, will you just give us a quick rendition of the stomp for us? Go on. Billy, will you join in? Now, mashed potato was a big hit of yours. Have a look at this, do you remember this? Now, they were pretty complex lyrics, weren't they? They were. Uh, 172 times in four minutes. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And I thought that we'd pick a song that would uh, tee off every parent in Australia, and that was the one that was we thought. Well. And it did it. Yeah, Mesh potato. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Billy, your singing career is about to take off, but your personal life takes a tragic twist. Your flatmate Natalie is brutally murdered in the cross. Unable to deal with her death, your other partner, Pepper, leaves you and you're now very much alone. So you throw yourself into your music. As a regular fixture at Surf City, you play to 2,000 kids a night. The next step is the national stage. And one man who helps you get there is journalist and author James Oram. Now, Jim couldn't be here tonight because he's seriously ill with cancer, but sends you this message. Well, tonight, Billy, this is your tribute. You enjoy it. You deserve it. You're a rock hero. You're a rock legend. It is now June 1964. You're 18 and about to turn the Australian music world on its ear. Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs released the cover song, Poison Ivy, and it screams up the charts to number one. In Australia, Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs are now up there with the Beatles. At just 18, you have three singles in the top 40 all at the same time. You also win a Logie for Best Teenage Performer. In the eyes of tens of thousands of fans, you are their idol. In the eyes of their parents, you are the devil himself. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> There's another happy customer. <laughs> and after the break, fame and then infamy as Billy Thorpe becomes the bad boy of rock and roll. <laughs> no. But first, some Cheerios from a few friends. You've always been a, a profound inspiration uh, to me and my brothers. Your unique singing. You're probably one of the greatest singers I've ever known in my life, and I'm sure you've been told that before. And we're very, very proud to know you. Congratulations on this wonderful night. Hey, Billy. You know, I never met you, but I used to listen, you know, when I was a teenager. And, uh, hey, congratulations there, bud. I hope your life's not over. You know, next to Judy Garland, Billy, you probably have to do the greatest version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. But in all sincerity, I don't know anybody in the rock and roll business that still smiles, that still looks as good as you do, and that's still as enthusiastic as you were yesterday. Keep on rocking, and thank you for being such a great role model. to Mr. Billy Thorpe. Billy, you're not even 20 when money squabbles blow Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs apart in 1965, but you don't miss a beat. With four new musos, you simply reform the band and your reign continues. The following year, you host your own television show called It's All Happening. You're only 21 when you host another television program called Go. But you then announce live on air that you plan to experiment with the drug LSD. <laughs> the Minister for Health threatens to throw you in jail and the show is suspended. <laughs> so what made you do that? Uh, it was, uh, seemed like a good idea at the time. time. <laughs> I was an idiot. <laughs> You're 22 when you make another public announcement. This time it's your engagement to Jackie home and life is pretty sweet. Two years after you announce your engagement to Jackie, you break it off. But it's not long before you fall in love again. This time you spot a beautiful blonde woman roaring through the streets on a motorcycle. You're in a taxi and you tell the driver, follow that girl. <laughs> and you've been following her ever since. It's your partner of 25 years, Lynn Thorpe. <laughs> So obviously Billy caught up with you that day. Yeah, I did see her on a bike and I got the cab to follow her and, uh, and that's how we met. Were you impressed with him? <laughs> well... Initially? He grew on me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind taking a seat next to Billy, please? Uh, <laughs> the lineup of the band changes once again and you make headlines when you're arrested this time for swearing on stage. You go to jail, but you're unrepentant. And typical as the wild man of rock and roll, as soon as you're released, you do it again. <laughs> Off stage, you and the band are just as infamous. There are always trashed hotel rooms, and on one occasion, you're even thrown out of a New South Wales country town. True? Yeah. You certainly earn a reputation for your wild all-night parties. I should know. I collected your garbage. It's Men at Work's lead singer, Colin Hay. <laughs> I just saw this guy last week too. I can't believe it. Why were you taking out his garbage? Because I was a garble. I uh, suppose that. It was, it was big news when Billy Thorpe moved into my neighbourhood, Morris, and... Uh, yeah, I did garbage on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So when did you meet him? Uh, years later. Uh, when they were when they were in LA and they were just like the toast of the town. He actually told me the story. He asked me backstage and said to me, Probably describe my know. house, you know, and said you lived in this house and your driveway looked like this and your bedroom was here and your garbage tins were around the back. And I'm thinking, yeah. what is this guy talking about? And he, I said, how do you know? They said I used to be your garbo. And I, I've told that story, not... A few times. A few times. <laughs> because he was just so open about it and so on. And uh, he, he's a lovely man. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Colin, thank you very much yeah. for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Oh, Cheers, man. man. Thank nice you. Nice jacket. <laughs> Colin is so great. Such a great artist. 
and then it worked. Your irreverent antics have by now made the Aztecs Aussie working class heroes. Mm. That same year, thousands of your followers come to salute you at the Sunbury Pop Festival, Australia's version of Woodstock. Recognise that bloke? Oh, Molly! <laughs> <laughs> Molly Meldrum, minus the hat. Billy, you're 26 and become a father for the first time when your daughter Rusty is born. By now, the times and the music are a-changing. Only one more album makes it into the charts before you and the Aztecs finally break up in 1975. Ever the Larrikins, you all pose bare-bottomed on the album's front cover. Billy, you now embark on a solo career, but soon become disenchanted with life in Australia. You've been in the public spotlight since you were 10, and you've had enough. You pack up your family and leave for America. And after the break, Billy Thorpe rides into Hollywood. But first, let's hear from a couple of your mates. Not worthy, Bill! I'm not worthy! How are you, Billy? Bill, the sad truth about it is, yes, you are the greatest rock and roll singer this country's ever produced. The prettiest. I am the loudest. Hey, it's just the truth, Bill. But this is your night. Congratulations, mate. Can you thought me how you make sure I couldn't be there? Listen, uh, I just had to tell you this. That, uh, you were the guy that I used to go and see. You're responsible for me screaming like this. I used to go and see you when I was about 14. I remember going to Sunbury. And, uh, well, what I remember of Sunbury. And you were the best, mate. I used to come and watch you get up the front, head bang, boop, boop, doo and all that. You're still doing it, mate. Good to see you. You're 30 in 1976 when you make a new start in the US and reinvent yourself. Your first American album, Children of the Sun, creates a totally different sound. You describe it as Pink Floyd meets the Aztecs. <laughs> the album rockets up the charts all over the country and within weeks it goes gold. Then in 1978, your second child, Lauren, is born. Your two biggest fans join us now, Lauren and Rusty, all the way from Los Angeles. <laughs> So, girls, what's it like having a rock star as a dad? That'd be a bit different, wouldn't it? Mm, pretty mm. cool. Yeah. Cool? Everyone always thinks he's our boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's pretty flattering. He never conforms to this, the school banquets. He always comes in his leather jacket instead of the nice little suit. And... Is that right? So you're pretty young. Well, they used to be freaked out by me, be honest. Yeah. I, I had long hair and they'd get your hair cut, and then I was cool, you know. Girls, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Billy, this year you turned 50, but you're still a big kid at heart. In fact, it's Billy the Kid and Butch Cassidy who inspire you to regularly dress up as a cowboy. You're a member of the elite hole-in-the-wall cowboy gang, a group of directors, actors and musos who don their 10-gallon hats and go riding in the Wyoming wilderness. Now, they've heard that we've kidnapped you and they're doing their best to try and get you back. Yes, sir. Now we can pay that stinking ransom money and spring old Billy. How much do we get, Cash? Looks like about 200 grand. Woo -hoo! All right. Why don't we just offer him 100? We'll keep the rest for ourselves. <laughs> hey, hey, we're talking about a fellow hole in the wall gang member here. Let's offer him 50 and see if they push us. How are we going to ride from here to Australia? Well, I'd say very carefully. You saying I'm not the outlaw that Billy Thorpe is? That's it. Grab your weapons. Whoever gets out of this alive, take the ransom. Spring Billy and cow Billy did all this for him. Let's go! Let's go! Oh, 
Well, Billy, one of the guys did make it out alive, and he's ridden all the way from America to be with you tonight, Cash Edwards. Come back now. <laughs> hey, Billy. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. You I believe it. Hey, buddy. I don't believe it. Go. Billy, Billy, come over a little place with us if you can. Oh, my God. Cash, how are you? Great to see you, man. Now, Cash, tell us more about the whole of the war game. Well, it's a, it's a group of friends from Denver and Hollywood. We get together every year, dress up as outlaws, and go riding where Butch Casting and Sundance Kid uh, went and camp out and a whole bit. And How does he handle camping out? Well, well, I'm the singer, you know. They, I, I was the first Aussie to, to be invited. I actually went on the 10th anniversary some years ago, and uh, they gave me a guitar, and I knew every Hank Williams song ever played, and they said, let's get this guy in the gang, you know? He knows one Hank Williams song. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Congratulations, mate. <laughs> Billy, it's been a wild and exciting ride, from pop idol to rock and roll bad boy, from businessman to family man. You live and you love it all. Well, the Sunbury Aztecs are over there waiting for you, and we wondered if you wouldn't mind closing tonight's show with your anthem song. Okay, what about it, ladies yeah. and gentlemen? Yeah. And Gil Matthews is playing drums with him here, and that's when I toured with Billy, Gil was the drummer. I'd never really known anybody who had been put in that position before. Of, this is your life. But it was really, it was so sweet when I came upon this. So I just thought I'd start the week off with a little Billy Thorpe, this is your life. And when I was digging around and as soon as, soon as I saw Tina Arena come on and talk to him and I was going, oh God, I remember working with her. So I'm going to try to dig that up and maybe I'll do Tina tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to get going here, get ready for my interview that I have to do with the, uh, the Canadians. And um, then a bunch of other stuff to take care of. I got some more music to do and some other charts to write and just get back in practicing the uh, immediate family stuff and call Van Dyke Parks and figure out when to go over to his house because we're heading up to uh, Berkeley to do a show together with uh, Grant Geisman and Van Dyke and myself in about two weeks. 
So we're going to get together and do a quick run through of, of Van Dyke's music. A couple other things going on. So it's a busy time, but it's overcast and nice outside today. So I'm going to look forward to that. And um, again, again, I just thought I, I long for the day we don't have to have this at the end of every video. Um, but we're still a long ways off yet. So I'm thanking from the bottom of my heart all of you people that are working daily trying to uh, keep this society, this economy, these lives afloat. Um, you're truly the, the heroic people in, in, in this world as far as I'm concerned. And I'm just imploring people, just get vaccinated. This is such a no-brainer. And I see all the arguments against it, and they are all about as they have the substance of a fart in a hurricane. Um, just gone. They're, they're, they're just gone. Um, but we'll never get past this if we don't really act as a, as a society and look out for the betterment of the community and not just individuals. So that's that. I will be back tomorrow, maybe with Tina Arena. We'll see. But uh, I just thought I, Billy is such a good cat and it was just so much fun to see that. So I thought I'd share it with you. So other than that, have a fabulous day and uh, and I will see you later. Okay, bye-bye.